Why wasn't he stopped? In which direction was he riding? Sire, the Prime Minister was riding towards the direction of Nanjing Town. Messengers riding at top speed have been dispatched to notify the guards on Mikang Road to stop him by all means necessary. Send out all the guards. Inform all checkpoints to stop the Prime Minister. If he escapes past them, all will be severely punished! Yes, yes, right away, sire. Even you shall her. Even you desert me. This is the worst kind of betrayal. And when you are captured, you will witness me exterminate all three of your clans. Xiao He's sudden disappearance enraged Liu Bang. He was not only the king's most trusted minister, but a close friend. Sire, more memorials to the throne submitted by the mansion of the Prime Minister. Any news of my loyal and faithful Prime Minister? The number of guards has increased at every checkpoint on Mikang Road. So far, there has been no sign of him. today. Leave me. Can't you see I'm troubled? I can. What troubles you, sire? You... You have returned. Indeed, my king. But why did you flee from me? I did not flee, your majesty. I was on a mission. A mission, was it? If I may explain. It began when I came into possession of a letter. Being unworthy, I, Han Shin, was fortunate to receive your great kindness, Prime Minister. I am most grateful to you. However, as the entire country is in hopeless turmoil now, and time and tide wait for no man, I am determined to leave and seek my fortune elsewhere. Prime Minister, please allow me to repay your kind generosity in the future. No. Wishing you very great fortune, your servant, Hun Shen. This is a disaster. Somebody prepare my horse! Chao Hua caught up with Han Xin on Michang Road. Nobody knows what was said or how he convinced Han Xin to return. However, this small hill will be called Jixian Hill later on, which means preserving the wise talent. You say you rode off into the night to chase after one man. Yet amongst all my generals, several dozen have escaped. And you never tried to even capture one of them. Why is this Han Xin so important. Those generals are easy to replace. But Han Xin's talents are unparalleled in the entire nation. Sir, if you only want to be a vassal king in Hanzhong, then no, you don't need Han Xin. But if you wish to compete against all the other armies to rule the entire nation, believe me, you must entrust this duty to no one but this man. Then, I will make him a lieutenant protector of the army. I will confer upon him 
The title of General to the Left. <laughs> All right, then. I will make him my general in chief. A most brilliant decision, sir. We can have a good rest tonight. We deserve it, after working all week to build the commander's stage. Who do you wager will be assigned as the uh, King's new commander-in-chief? Ah, it's no contest. I'm certain our new commander will be our General Tao. In recent days, he's been giving us gifts. It will be General Fawn, no doubt. Word has spread throughout the camp. We'll know soon enough. Ceremonies tomorrow. General Tao. See how confident he is? No more so than General Fan. The generals, who had loyally followed Liu Bang for many years, were all very pleased, as they were certain the honor would be bestowed upon them. Chao Chen, Fan Kui, and Guan Ying had rebelled against the Qin dynasty together with Liu Bang in their early years. Guan Ying served as central leader of the court gentleman. Fan Kui was Liu Bang's brother-in-law, and Chao Chen was a general. Today, I will announce the appointment of the new general-in-chief of the Han army. That honor and privilege goes to a man well-suited for this appointment. I hereby name that man. Han Shin! The grand historian biography of the Marquis of Huayin records that when the King of Han held the ritual to appoint the general in chief, everyone was shocked. Taking the commander's tally and seal at the tender age of 25, Han Xin was excited and proud. After suffering loneliness, hunger, coldness, and humiliation for more than a decade, he could finally make his ancestors proud and realize his ambitions. And at this moment, Han Xin felt a sense of fatherlike warmth for the man standing in front of him. Han Xin was grateful for the appreciation of his abilities and talents, and was willing to repay this with lifelong allegiance and extreme sacrifices. He was ready to build an invincible Han to help Liu Bang unify the entire Chinese nation. Who are you? 